the Windows operating system. Most people dislike it for one reason or another, be it the increasingly poor performance on lower spec PCs with RAM usage exceeding multiple gigabytes whilst idling, or is it that people are just getting sick and tired of Windows constantly being a land of shifting sands? But what does that mean, really? When I say Windows is a land of shifting sands, I am referring to the seemingly constant movement of features, literally in uh, some instances, and the increasingly more difficult to work with use case for the majority of users, which seems to get worse with every major update that Microsoft introduces. A big bump in the road for industry users and consumers users was the release of Windows 11 which would eventually replace Windows 10, with support for Windows 10 Home officially ending in uh, October 14th, 2025, and the Windows 10 Pro version, as well as the Enterprise version, also having their support officially axed on the same date, according to Microsoft's website anyway, and we all know how reliable that thing can be sometimes. <coughs> Windows 10 being the last version of Windows ever, that went well. Though, credit where credit is due, the transition from Windows 10 to Windows 11 could have gone worse. It wasn't great, for sure, but it could have gone worse. I think the mindful consumer's trust for Microsoft and their Windows operating system has degraded to the point of just people assuming that whatever Microsoft are trying to accomplish will it will just end badly, and with a worse user experience overall, than if they had just left whatever they were doing by itself, you know, just left it and stopped trying to fix something that's not broken. I think a great example of this is Microsoft Edge. Microsoft Edge was the spirited successor to everyone's favourite Internet Explorer. The original version of Edge was sort of clunky, had an older look to it and didn't really introduce anything that the established competition within the web browsing field hadn't already had done. But it did what it said on the tin and that was allow the users to browse the internet. Albeit with slightly more overhead than if you were using something more professional like Firefox. Compare that older Microsoft Edge to the one that we all have to deal with today. Yeah, you'd be forgiven for thinking Microsoft Edge is becoming its own proto-cyber dystopian, all-consuming neo-operating system. First of all, the overhead for Microsoft Edge to run on a computer is way more than it needs to be for a web browser. Windows ingrained advertisements and pop-up notifications my god, the pop-ups. There really is no need for Windows to inform me that, no, I do not in fact have Microsoft Edge as my default browser. And no, I won't replace my hardened Firefox version with it. But come on, does anyone with an ounce of computer know-how really voluntarily uses Microsoft Edge as their browser of choice? Well, now that I say that, probably, but I'm willing to bet that number is not that high, and I am also willing to bet that the vast majority of users who do in fact use Microsoft Edge on a day-to-day -day basis probably have to because it's on their work computer or they simply just can't be bothered with Google Chrome. But the biggest reason why Microsoft Edge has the share of users that it does is just because it's pre-installed within Windows. Even with the advent of near NPC level technical requirements to use a computer with the modern age, you still have Google Chrome being the top dog when it comes to web browsers, which actively requires its users to, dare I say, go on the internet and download it. Maybe this statistic shows just how inept Microsoft Edge is. The fact that Windows users, the majority of which do not possess much knowledge about the system they are using, still go out of their way to download an external program and run the executable in order to have a better browsing experience. I'd say in 2023, that's kind of impressive. But, as the saying goes, what do you use Internet Explorer for? To download Firefox.
But why am I talking so much about Microsoft Edge when the video title is, is about uh, everyone's kind of not so loving relationship with Windows 11? I'll tell you why. Because I believe personally that within the next couple of years, Windows is going to change and not for the better. Again, I think it's going to change into an online service akin to that of Chrome OS, with Microsoft Edge playing a critical role within it. Windows has already moved from a one-time fee to a subscription-based service, with your data being used to pay for it. As one Forbes article said during the late part of 2019, your data is the new oil, and it's only going to become a more plentiful resource in the future. I believe that Windows 11 has acted as the catalyst for a permanently online operating system that uses cloud computing as its installation medium, with your laptop or desktop being replaced with something akin to a small form factor client PC from 2007, and becoming more of a terminal used to access a system owned and operated many miles away from a centralised location. Computational power is moving away from the consumer's own PC, and more towards large corporate-owned server farms that would profit from your consumption of media through advertisements, but also from selling whatever data they can legally and maybe even slightly illegally collect from you to related businesses and, and advertisers in a way that would maximise their profits. Your usage habits, the times you go on your computer and when you're more likely to make purchases online will all be collected and used by companies to target you when it's likely to be the most effective. This is already being done by companies like Amazon, but what I'm talking about is a far wider reaching and more invasive form of this sort of hyper-invasive, capitalistic beast. Does this sound a little too pessimistic and extreme? Yeah, yes, it's, it's definitely on the pessimistic side of things, but should technologically minded people even be bothered? about a seemingly already doomed product. In the future, we might see a more diverse range of computer users. And yet again, we might see a more condensed form of computer user. What, what, what do I mean by that? Um, I mean that you have the mass of people who use computers simply as a tool uh, to do work on, and then you also have the people who use computers as a, as a sort of hobby. You know, think of your... Linux users, for example, the people who actually know their computers in depth. I think a good comparison can be made with, with people who enjoy cars, for example. You have the vast majority of car owners who know nothing at, know nothing about the in-depth details of their car, other than they need to replace the wind, windscreen wash every now and then and take it every six months to a year for a service. But then you have the people who actively modify their cars, who dive into their cars to figure out what makes it tick. Same thing can be said about computers. Will this become more and more common? Who knows? I don't have a crystal ball. Um, but let me know what you think about it. Let me know in the comments. Alright, that's enough rambling for one day. Like the video if you did like it. Subscribe to the channel if you really liked it for whatever reason. And I'll catch you later.